and welcome to learn data i'm nilesh and today we are going to look at exploratory data analysis in this particular section you need prior knowledge of couple of items that i have on this slide you need to know what are basic data type what are lists how they work arrays indexing data frames and how to create basic plots with matplotlib if you do not have uh, this knowledge or if you are not sure about it i highly recommend that you uh, probably go on to go back and look at the videos that lead up to this particular video because uh, i'll be using most of that uh, knowledge in this particular uh, video so what is that you learn in this particular video we are going to look at what in exploratory data analysis or eda means and how it can help us to understand requirements or questions that are asked uh, based on a specific set of data uh, in the process we'll learn how to import a csv uh, data from a csv file and i'll post the link of that in the description uh, the file is hosted online then i'll also look at how we can put that data that we imported into pandas data frame and finally once we have the data in the data frame we can then start pre-processing identify some of the important parameters and create visualizations to see what actually we have in the data what is the data telling us and the goal here would be to kind of narrow down on what would be the factors that could be influencing influencing the question that we are trying to answer or else if we cannot find them then we are probably going to look for potential areas that need more data to understand the question better and to propose a better answer so in exploratory data analysis what we essentially do is let's say we have a big set of data it can be a smaller data or a larger data doesn't matter the very first step is you want to know what's in the data and so the uh, initial stage is to kind of break open the data and see what's in it what are the columns what are the rows are they integers are they numeric are they related to each other are they not related uh, are there missing values in them are there no missing values are there any trends in the data so we kind of go through this process of picking and choosing different parts of the data set and trying to make sense of what it all means and in the process we are going to create visualizations because those are the easiest way i think at least for me to kind of see what's what the data consists of and once you have that then it starts opening your a door to new ideas uh, it will be oh we this is how this is related to this other parameter and therefore maybe we can use those in a time series or maybe we see that oh if x increases then y increases maybe those two are related or there is some anomaly here all the data seems to be much higher at for all these factors but except for these couple of records those values are very low so maybe something's up there so those need to be analyzed further and that's what in a summary exploratory data analysis is uh, and what you'll be using here is plotting you'll also be using statistics a uh, little bit of it uh, but for this video we are not going to use any of statistics this is just a pure visualization uh, attempt to explain what exploratory data analysis is so let's get started and hop on into the jupyter notebook here i've already imported the libraries uh, today we'll be needing numpy pandas and matplotlib so i've already gone ahead and imported those three libraries next to read the csv file uh, we first have to specify the path where the csv file is stored and then this is the file that is available for download and once you have that file what you want to do is type 
pd dot read underscore csv open parenthesis and in there you want to specify the path plus the name of the file what the plus sign does is it gives it joins those two strings together uh, that's the easy way i found to have the path attached to that particular file and here we are storing that in a variable called data and when it is imported and stored pandas automatically converts the data from that csv file into a data frame so as we know it, once the data is in a data frame format we can use pandas commands to see what's in the data and here we are using the head command to look at the top two rows of that data set and this is what's in that particular uh, csv file it has couple of columns and let's look at the shape of data so we'll know exactly how many columns and rows we are dealing with so we have about 100 rows and we have around 15 columns so these are the columns and we can also look at what type of columns they are and if there are any missing values we'll, we'll get into that uh, in in a few minute now this data set is a made up data set it's not actual data uh, i've put it together to kind of simulate a situation in a restaurant therefore it's uh, the file is named restaurant data and now let's go ahead and start pre-processing or looking into the data so first we can say pre-processing and here we can look at a uh, couple of items first we can look at what is the uh, type of the data uh, before we get into that uh, let's go ahead and make a copy of this because it's a small data set it shouldn't matter the reason why we are making a copy is because if we do anything to the df data frame then the original data frame still is intact and we don't have to reread it from the csv file now if you look at the type of variables in this particular data set so let's say type of columns so what type of data is in the columns are the integers are the strings so if you say df dot d types here as you can see we have customer id which is the integer then gender is a object then we have some floats and then vegetarian non vegetarian tea lunch dinner these are all objects okay and these uh, all these data sets are online so with description uh, i'll just go with what each of these mean gender of course uh, is the gender of the person age customer rating this is how the uh, customers who visit the restaurant are rating the services in the restaurant number of weekly days visited is the number of times uh, number of times during a week the person visits the particular restaurant so if they visit twice in a day it's just counted as one so it's number of weekly day. if they come once three days then it's counted three visits uh, three days they have been to the restaurant minutes to restaurant is the time it takes for the person to reach the restaurant from the place where they start from the place they where they usually start then daily amount spent how much is the amount that each person who visits the restaurant is spending on the items that they purchase in the restaurant number of items ordered uh, how many items do they order would it be just a, a dish and maybe water or soda or maybe tea coffee whatever they order along with uh, whenever they visit the restaurant are they vegetarian or non-vegetarian uh, if and their employer name so it could be name of the person's employer or they could be uh, someone from the family of the person who is employed who visit with them so if they are kids for a person 
who is employed at company X, here they will be flagged as they are work they are associated with that company X. Breakfast, yes or no. Coffee, yes or no. Tea, yes or no. Lunch, dinner, yes or no. Do they uh, have breakfast, yes or no? That sort of question. So now we know that these are the types of uh, columns in there. Let's look at if there are any empty columns. So if you do df dot fill any, sorry df dot is any, and then sum. What this will give us is, does it have any records that are NANs? And here we can see that number of weekly days visited. There is one record that is uh, one blank. Now there are we'll go over how to handle missing values in a separate video but here we'll use a very simple approach we'll replace the empty uh, cells with the value of zero in this case for number of weekly days visited to do that what we want to do is uh, have the column and then is equal to df and then we want to have that column there and dot fill any and this would be zero so now if you look at the df dot is any dot sum that particular one which appears blank above would be gone and we can see that that is now replaced by a zero and therefore it is no longer a blank cell okay so, so far we have looked at what the types of column are, we have looked at how to handle maybe missing values, how to treat missing values. So next we are going to dive a little deeper into this particular subject, let me delete these lines. Okay, now what we can do is we can take a visual look at what's in the data so let's look at visualize now by visualizing i mean it could be creating a plot or it could be just pulling a couple of rows and looking at them now if we are going to first look at what's in the data i usually prefer doing a df dot log. so we pull just one row and look at what the row looks like so here we can see the customer id it's a number you have the gender which is a letter it's a word m a l e not just a letter m then we have age customer rating and then we have this yes or no we have company names now immediately the question comes to my mind is okay there is company how many companies are there and when i look at age uh, how many types of age ranges are there customer rating the how many customer ratings what is the lowest what is the highest how many people are there with the lowest how many are there with the highest then uh, another when we look at this breakfast how many people prefer to eat breakfast how many don't similarly how many prefer coffee how many prefer tea are there any people who what is the proportion of people who uh, eat lunch at the restaurant versus how many eat dinner so it's like an endless loop of questions uh, that we need to satisfy to kind of get an understanding what the data is all about before we can get into any questions now here one obvious question that we uh, will head towards is uh, finding ways to improve customer rating so that that's the question we are trying to answer in this video and uh, let's see if we can get there now once we have seen this let's go ahead and see how many companies are there so to do that we can uh, use a unique command so if you say df and here if you say employer name and now here if you say unique what this will give us is the name unique names of companies so here we can see there is global xyz maxmin ai ventures techno or z indexer technologies pivot df self-employed so there are about one two three six 
six companies listed there six employers or employer types listed and next let's look at what is the minimum and maximum customer rating so to do that we can look at the customer call customer rating column so customer rating and here we say max we get the max is five so that's good to know so looks like it's on a scale from one to five and that's what it is it's on a scale from one to five so we know that usually this information is given in the description but it's always good to double check now another uh, item that i'd like to see is minutes to restaurant how far are uh, people willing to travel to get to this restaurant i mean five minutes ten minutes or is it like an hour people are willing to drive so let's go ahead and check that max wow oh, so here it's 90 minutes so people are actually traveling that far to get to the restaurant that's so this must be a really good restaurant so if we look at the min so minutes to restaurant and here if you look at the min it's one minute so it looks like there's a couple of people maybe they'll be they probably drive from long distances but they may not be uh, routine visitors or repeat customers most of the close uh, distance uh, customers would have a high chance that they are repeat customers next let's look at how much uh, daily amount do they spend so that that is interesting because if there are people uh, who spend a lot of money it tells us that wow 200 so uh, depending on what currency you're talking about here if it's dollars that's a, a big chunk of money if they're spending that much daily now when uh, that much amount is spent few more new questions come up and those are well why are they spending those that much are they buying because in the restaurants let's say we know for sure that the dishes cannot be that expensive that one dish costs hundred dollars it's not like that so it's possible that they may be coming in groups uh, for a meeting and then their manager or their boss picks up the tab for the or entire team and that's why the total that they spend is a lot maybe 200 now let's go ahead and look how much they spend if it's for minimum are there any people who just stop by to get a cup of coffee and then just leave that's what it looks like so there are people who stop by only spend two dollars so that's uh, maybe they just get a bottle of water or something on the way now apart from this we can also look at how many number of items do they order so usually you'd say they probably want to order if they are for breakfast they'll order the main dish plus coffee so two items at least let's see how many number of items uh, that they order so i'm gonna copy this and paste it here now we can look at the max and main both so max wow so six items ordered so this kind of fits really well with the idea that if there are more people if there are six people around the table in the same group uh, then six items ordered on that particular by that particular person makes sense now if you look at the min uh, let's see how many items ordered we can see and one that's also that also makes sense because if the person is spending two dollars to get a bottle of water then uh, we it, they, it's just one item that they're purchasing now we can go much deeper in this one step further and find out who these people are who order six items how do we do that so let me bring this to the center of screen uh, if uh, let's say if you want to filter the way you want to filter is this way df open square brackets and inside the square brackets you want to specify the condition so the condition that we are going to specify is that 
the number of items ordered by the person is equal to six okay and first we'll look at the shape just so that we know how many rows we are looking at okay it's 23 rows so it should be okay to pull all of them in the notebook and uh, now we have a pretty good data set here where we can look at people who are ordering six items and all of them spend upwards of hundred dollars see the 25 200 179 and they are pretty they live they commute they don't have to drive or they don't have to commute too far it's this one person is 11 minutes but all of all the others are less than five minutes and the customer ratings are pretty good uh, except for this person uh, they they are in four and five for most part so that that's really nice and then down here we can see number of weekly days they visit and most of these are regulars you see they they come to the restaurants every single day except for this one all of them uh, uh, come to the restaurant every single day now there is uh, anomaly that we can catch which is this one if they did not visit a restaurant how come they spend $200 and it's not that they did not visit what happened here was we in the pre-processing step we filled that empty cell with a zero and this is that zero that's come up here so we in this case we would not worry about that too much uh, but whenever we are dealing with missing values we have to be careful how those missing values are filled and how what how what effect that can have on the data set so here we can see that most of these appear to be from this company called uh, in uh, well indexer technologies and global xyz so most of those are from those two companies and as we can see here one striking thing is they have uh, they all are here for lunch for sure so every every record has a yes it means they they definitely are there for lunch and for breakfast a couple of them are not there but most of them are there for breakfast also and they are both tea and coffee drinkers so that that's pretty good and some of them even are there for dinner maybe they live close to the restaurant in the same area where the company is located so Maybe their apartments are close by and they prefer to have dinner in the same restaurant. So th that's pretty good insight into what uh, the number of items tells us, a number of items, amount of dollars spent and the uh, customer rating. So once we know this, now we can start thinking, OK, so the lower rating that some of the customers are giving us those probably are not from the people who spend a lot of money uh, because if you are spending money you you are there most likely because you like it right you are not going to spend money because you don't like uh, the stuff that they're selling so let's go ahead and look at some charts now the easiest charts that we can create are bar charts and what i'm going to do is pull the df the first row again so we can take a look at what the columns are here we can see that if we were to plot the daily amount spent and number of items ordered we could see some trend because if you are buying more items you're spending more money hence the dollar amount spent should increase right so let's go ahead and see if we get the same uh, same plot so plt dot scatter and here i'm going to say df and let's put the number of items ordered on the x-axis i'm going to put number of uh, let's say dollar amount spent on the y-axis and let's plot this oh wow so here it's a really nice trend as you can see the fewer the person dollars the person spends the lesser the number of items they buy and the more number of items they buy the more um, more is the amount that they spend 
so here you can specify alpha is equal to 0 0.5 what that does is uh, sorry alpha is equal to 0.5 that should be a okay so here we can see that there are overlapping dots so when we specify alpha value it makes them transparent so that we can see if there are underlying dots in there the here now the darker dots are definitely telling us that there are more than one data points at that particular uh, location now so we that curiosity is also satisfied we know now that yes if the they buy more they spend more now let's look at what is the proportion of employers uh, like what is the proportion of customers by employee do we know that and we can find proportions for all of these how much they how much eat breakfast how many do it drink coffee etc etc so to do that there is a command called group by so group by group by and the work group by um, group by works is uh, this way if we let's say we have this data from df and we want to know how many total number of employees uh, how many customers in our restaurant represent uh, are from specific employees around that particular restaurant so we can say df dot group by and in group by we can specify the parameter that we need uh, to be counted uh, for so here we are going to count for employer name so what will happen is we'll get the count of num customers by each employer name and then we can say uh, customer id and we are going to count them okay so when we count this here we can see that most of the customers so since we have 100 total rows this may makes it very easy to get percentages so 47 that is 47 out of 100 which is 47 percent of the customers that we have in a restaurant are from are employed by global xyz and then the remaining 26 percent are employed by these two companies indexer technologies and max mine adventures so that's pretty good uh, and it tells us that global xyz is kind of the big chunk of our customers and if we need to uh, get more customers or see more customer satisfaction that is the potential group we need to target or maybe these three as well um, that could be maybe ways of giving discounts uh, sometimes to the people who are visiting from those companies or we can work in we can actually work with their HR team and uh, find out what they like what they don't like uh, what are the timings they prefer when the lunch should be served or general when are their busiest days or what are their schedules for meetings based on that we can maybe if possible change certain things on our side in the restaurant and maybe that will just make those customers from these companies happier and that's that's the end goal right now if we want to plot this what we could do is we can store all of these uh, this data in another data frame so let's say we call a data frame x and we'll call is employer name and here we can go ahead and copy and paste this here now i'm going to type reset index what that will do is it will reset the indices and assign these values 0 to 1 and it will become data frame that will be stored here so when we go ahead here and look at what we get copy this paste it here on this now as you can see we have a data frame employer x underscore employer underscore name which has these two columns and we have index on the left hand side now we can actually go ahead and rename this column this is not actual customer id we know that and it's the count of customers 
So to rename, what we want to do is type rename, open parenthesis and columns is equal to, we are going to use a dictionary. So we, here we specify the older column name, so that's customer ID and colon, we we'll specify the new ID. You can say customer count. And when we run this, now we get the count of customers listed here. Next, let's go ahead and try to plot this as a bar chart. And to do that, we're going to use plt.bar. And here, we'll copy this data frame. And in that data frame, on x-axis, we want the employer name. So that's what we have there. And then for y-axis, we are specifying the count. So it's going to be the customer count. And we can run this. So here we go. So we see that the bars, but now the uh, names of the companies are overlapping and you probably know how to fix this. We are going to use plt.xtix and rotation is equal to 90. If you do not remember this, I probably recommend uh, revisiting the matplotlib video. Okay. Uh, here now we can clearly see that global XYZ is around 47% and then these three are around 13% uh, each. So if we want to target the customers, I think these first four would be the ones that we would we can focus on because those are the major uh, customer, uh, that major set of customers that are in our restaurant. Next, let's look at few other parameters and see what we can find. So I'm going to pull the df.irlock again. And here, uh, why don't we go ahead and find the proportions for all of these, uh, all these columns. And to do that, we can go ahead and create the uh, data frames as we did above. And the easier way would be just to copy that those two lines and paste it here. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just change the parts of those names. So here we'll say non-veg for the data frame name, change that here. And in here, again, we change that. And this will give us the value for how many of them say yes and how many say no for type of diet that they prefer. Similarly, we need, we have a couple more to go. So I'm going to copy and paste this here. The next one we want to look at is uh, breakfast. So how many prefer breakfast, how many don't. And we got that. After that, we have coffee. So let's put coffee in there. And how many prefer coffee. After coffee, we have tea, lunch, and dinner. So I'm going to go ahead and add the tea here so that and then we have lunch and we add the lunch here and finally we have the dinner oh, sorry so let's copy this and paste it here dinner and for dinner we have that i think that takes care of most of it and we have the gender so why don't we add the gender as well so go ahead and change that and gender okay so we now have all these data frames created and we can go ahead and plot them now for plotting them uh, we can plot them one by one or we can plot them in the grid as you've already seen as subplots and that makes it easier to visualize all of them at once so why don't we do that figure is equal to a figure dot uh, sorry plt dot figure and here in the fix size we are going to specify let's start with 15 length width and 5 height and then in here we can specify plt dot subplot and these are we have how many 3 plus 3, 6 plus 1, 7. So if we put 3 in a row, we need 3 rows and 3 columns. So 3, comma 3, 3 rows, 3 columns, and this is plot number 1. 
and in this plot we are going to put gender so blt dot bar x underscore gender and this is gender that's the column we want on the x axis and then on the y axis we want x gender and this would be the customer count cost count and that's for that one similarly we can just go ahead and copy paste this one two three and these then would be this is a different data frame for the diet type and i'm going to specify that here for those two and this would be the non-vegetarian string that goes right there after that we have breakfast so x breakfast here and we have the string for breakfast it was here and this is now going to be plot number two plot number three okay now we can go ahead and copy these three and paste them here and enable these at plot four plot five plot six we need one more and that's let's do that and then we have plot number seven and we have tea coffee so let's start with coffee and we can specify them here here and this is coffee and then we have tea I'm just gonna type this time tea right there and there and this is tea then we have lunch and dinner breakfast and gender okay so this could have been we already have this one up there so this could be what lunch and dinner so let's put lunch and this is again lunch and for this lunch and for dinner we'll add that down here dinner dinner and this is again dinner now after all these are there we need to specify the plt dot tight layout so that they are spaced correctly and plt dot show we won't worry about the x and y labels and titles at this time um, we just want to see how they look okay so here is the data set and this is what we have so uh, maybe it would have been a good idea to add the titles hold on let's go ahead and add that plt dot title and this is non-vegetarian and here here plt dot title and this is gender plt dot title and this would be breakfast and this is plt dot title we have lunch and we have plt dot title and this is coffee and we have plt dot title and this is tea and then finally we have plt dot title and this is dinner now we should be able to see it correctly okay here this is really interesting uh, now we can see that the proportion of male and female is more or less equal however we have more number of people who prefer non-veg there are more people who eat breakfast more people who eat lunch less people who eat dinner more people who drink prefer coffee and less people who prefer the drink tea those are all really interesting things that we can see now uh, going back to our question which was how do we improve customer satisfaction uh, then what we want to focus there is uh, why are people giving less customer rating and to identify those what we can do now is go ahead and uh, filter the data frame to find out only those that are giving ratings of three or less so let's create another data frame called df less and here we are going to 
look for the customer ratings that are less than three three or less than three so less than or equal to three and, and let's look at the shape of this how and run this okay 30 so we can go ahead and pull that entire data frame in the notebook here we can see that most of these appear to be from global xyz uh, large part of those and they seem to be only this person is a regular visits five times a week but there are people who visit most of the people visit once or twice a week and the dollar amount that they spend they do spend substantial amount those that come here so that is interesting now if we look at uh, the lunch dinner and coffee side of that we can see that um, except for these two no one uh, eats comes there for dinner most of them do come there for lunch and they absolutely come there for coffee each and every one of them so coffee yes lunch uh, yes as well there are some people who drink both tea and coffee that's good to see then there are a couple of them from those people who drink who are there for breakfast as well now number of items ordered we can see that those who spend more money for example this one they i order four items so these are i think four to six items so these could be that they are teams that come to the restaurant and uh, that's why the, the bill is so high but some of them come only have, are there only once maybe it's their weekly meeting and now let's look on this side if we can find anything the customer rating so uh, here we can clearly see that there is a striking difference one there are people who uh, rank only one give only one rating then there are these people who give only two rating so that's almost more than half of the people uh, who are three or below so these are the people that we probably want to focus and find out why what's going on wrong and we can see that most of these are from global xyz so we are now narrowing down on what could be the possible problems for the people who are giving less rating to the customer to the service the restaurant service and they are mostly non-vegetarian they order most they order different one to four that's okay they do spend a lot of money and the commute time to for them is for most of them they are pretty close uh, two to five minutes but there are three of these that have commuted a longer and more than an hour so that's uh, interesting now uh, based on uh, i'm sure you also have a couple of questions what could be going on here i'll give you my thoughts on uh, what could be happening and the future further direction that could be uh, pursued to answer the question of the lower rating one is i uh, think here that we definitely need to focus on global xyz uh, and find out what these customers do not like my guess would be that one of the points of their frustration could be wait time for uh, once they place the orders because if there's for example these customers who are driving an hour for uh, to get to the restaurant they drive 78 minutes they're spending hundred dollars and there are four of them assuming that there are four people or it could be just one person and they are there for both breakfast coffee and lunch so they definitely uh, like the food there maybe but uh, some service is not good maybe it's the uh, payment of the bills or types of credit card accepted maybe that's the reason if we look at 
these top other ones what we can see is that these two are not there for lunch so something uh, during the coffee that they so this guy comes there for breakfast and coffee every every single day and if that person is not satisfied it tells me that maybe the coffee is not good as simple as that or maybe it's a rush hour time in the morning and this person has to wait every single day uh, for the coffee and gets late for the office so maybe there's something there that could be worked on next if you we'll, uh, look at the ages here so this age here is 10 so it's uh, the kid has given rating of one so it's either the kid or the person accompanying the kid and they drove 78 minutes to get to the restaurant and spent hundred dollars and that hundred dollars was probably spent either of these three uh, breakfast coffee lunch so i'm guessing it's breakfast and lunch along with other people most likely it could be the case that the restaurant did not have anything for kids like kids meal that the uh, they would have uh, liked so maybe that could be another focus to have a kids meal that uh, that is liked by the customers who visit so next time they visit we could ask them or take a survey ask them what are the types of dishes the kids would like to have in the restaurant and those could be provided there so that's just the summary of how the my thought process would go about looking into this and uh, moving forward uh, in, in this particular data set now let's go back to the data frame that we have and here we can also we can also now look at some uh, correlations so we already saw that the in buying more number of items also corresponds to the amount spent uh, is in that also increases so there is a there seems to be a direct correlation now if, while saying correlation without getting into statistics just want to mention a word of caution that those two may not be uh, correlated there could be a third factor uh, that is involved which is actually the cause for them to appear that they are correlated so that's just to keep in at back of your mind when uh, looking at correlations those are called i think confounding factors uh, so now let's look at age ages and what is the proportion of people like what are the age proportions what we can do is we can plot a histogram so if we say plt.hist and df and here if we put age and run this we can see the age distribution and here we can see that most of the uh, people are in age ranges 20 to 40 if we change the bins so let's say bins is equal to 15 see if that helps no it does not okay yep so most of the people are in age range of 10 20 to 50 and there are a couple more uh, from 50 to 60 65 so if uh, if we are trying to uh, increase the customer rating then we definitely also want to look for the uh, choices that different age group people customers in different age groups would make for example if uh, you think that uh, elderly people would prefer to eat uh, food that uh, they have uh, food that doesn't that uh, kind of uh, matches their dietary restrictions as opposed to uh, age groups 
20 30 where they may not have those many dietary restrictions so they may be open to a larger variety of foods so for example maybe sweet desserts they may be preferred by age group 20 to 30 uh, which may not be preferred by age groups uh, that are higher up above now, and if there are some salads i'm guessing salads everyone could prefer uh, based on what their uh, dietary preferences are so that's one uh, item to look at here now we can relate this back to the customer satisfaction here if we go up and look at who, who, what the age group of people who gave customer rating of one what do we see and we see that except for these uh, well there are mix so we see that there are couple of people who are 40 and above there are these people who are 10 and 20 this is a kid and these are 20 and all of them have given lower rating so maybe uh, the food that interests these two age groups and there's not uh, much variety in the restaurant so that could be addressed and maybe that will help among these i definitely look for the people who are visiting most frequently such as this person who visits all five days and that person is not there for breakfast but that person is there for tea and coffee so it's probably not about the food it's about on the type of coffee maybe the coffee is just bad and therefore maybe uh, finding finding that out would help increase the customer rating uh, in that particular case now let's look at another variable here we have minutes to restaurant uh, how many minutes does a person drive uh, so if we do a histogram plot it would tell us what is the general what majority of the customers commute what is the distance they travel so it seems most of them are pretty close to less than 10 minutes i mean 80 percent or of them are less than 10 minutes there are a couple that are they travel commute more but most of them are pretty close so these seem to be on the k happy ones let's find out if we go back to this table where people who have given lesser rating and look at their commute time so minutes to restaurant so here we can see that except for these two three that are in double digits all and this one all of them are pretty they live nearby so they are all less than 10 minutes or even yep seven so they are customers from nearby companies uh, that are uh, visiting the restaurant so commute time is not an issue and my guess then would be you can think of uh, situations where why would a person who uh, can who just has to walk maybe three four minutes to get to the restaurant is frustrated uh, the reason here could be maybe there could be a number of reasons but if i were to guess it could be that the wait time for checkout if the person is thinking oh it's just down the road i'm gonna go there grab a sandwich and come back but if the person walks there uh, buys this gets the sandwich but then at the cashier register he has to stand there in line for 15 minutes that will definitely frustrate the person it kind of offsets the advantage of uh, not having to commute 10 or half an hour to get to the restaurant and back so the, instead of saving time actually the person is end, ending up spending more time to uh, uh, get that particular lunch or breakfast that they are looking for so that that's one another possibility there so i'll end this particular discussion now because we this can go on and uh, we can look into more details on this in 
next future videos i'll go on more on this in statistical standpoint but for now i think this will give you a good idea of what to do with a csv file how to open it how to look at data how to look at missing values how to create plots charts and how to kind of start thinking about what the data is trying to tell and what direction we need to move to find the answer to a question that is posed based on that particular data i hope you uh, liked the discussion please let me know in the comments below uh, if you like these types of videos i'll try to create more of these and thank you please like share and subscribe it helps me stay motivated to create more content for you guys i'll see you all in the next video thank you